Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Week supplemental edition. This is number 159. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And today we're going to be talking about a couple of things. We're going to, uh, talk about the upcoming town hall. Uh, we have some knife life news. Those are some uh, upcoming knife drops we're going to check out. And then uh, my state of the collection. I'm going to show you some knives that are coming through the den and then also ones that are staying here permanently. New knives in my collection. And then we're going to wrap up at the end with a new concept. Something I thought of last year. Um, it's one of my many moratoriums. I'm always putting moratoriums on myself, rarely following through on them. Uh, but I'll tell you about my latest moratorium because it has to do with knives, and uh, that'll be here at the end. Uh, but first, I want to talk about uh, this past week, we uh, canceled Thursday Night Knives, something we don't do frequently. We did it uh, in August when I was on vacation, but uh, we canceled it this past week for the presidential um, debate. And uh, definitely wanted to watch that. I'm glad I did. And uh, well, there you have it. We're back at it this week, tomorrow night. We're going to be uh, back at Thursday Night Knives. And we will be auctioning off the famous Topps Knives. I thought I had it close, but I don't. Topps Knives Eye Stick. That's the giant half-inch thick slab of uh, 1095 uh, honed on both sides into a punch dagger. Uh, a punch dagger fit for Hercules, I got to say. We're going to be auctioning that off tomorrow night for, uh, and the proceeds to that auction will be going to uh, Therapeutic Edge and his uh, his GoFundMe. I think he's had a uh, quite a costly eye surgery uh, happen. And so uh, a lot of people are banding together to help him out, and uh, we will be doing the same here. Uh, November 4th is the next town hall. Yes, the next town hall, something we're all very excited about. Uh, you know, we get that itch. Uh, oh, I said November 4th. I'm sorry. I meant 14th. Uh, we get that itch every three or four months or so to gather together some of the makers that we've spoken to recently and then some older friends and bring them together in a town hall format live on YouTube. This will be Saturday, November 14th at noon Eastern Standard Time. We get together. Each knife maker guest has a uh, has about a half hour window to show off. This time they're going to be showing off their workspace, taking questions from viewers, and uh, and we have some pretty exciting guests confirmed. We have uh, Alex Steingraber, uh, who I may have missed my opportunity to get one of his recent three V sharks. I don't know. I got to find out after this recording. We got T.J. Schwartz, the uh, the famed young and powerful uh, designer of knives. He, he uh, of course, is responsible for the Koenig Arius, and, uh, but also uh, a lot of knives from CRKT and other places recently. I'm going to be talking about the Overland in a second. Uh, and we also have Lance Abernathy of Sniper Blade Works coming on. Uh, we just spoke with him a couple weeks back. Great guy, you know, making making his really cool knife designs that were custom once he's now putting them in a production format. Looking forward to having him on. And then we have the great and powerful Ernest Emerson coming on the podcast, not just on the podcast, on the uh, on the town hall. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so we will have uh, Ernest Emerson here. We will have TJ Schwartz, Lance Abernathy, and Alex Steingraber. Uh, we have a couple of other invitations out. I haven't heard back from. We might uh, have some more great people on. So it's an opportunity for you all to you know, comment in, well, to watch primarily, comment in, ask questions of these makers and uh, start a dialogue up. That's the whole point of these town halls. Uh, so uh, you don't have to hear politics at this town hall, just awesome, awesome knife talk. So, so speaking of, uh, I just mentioned TJ Schwartz, who will be one of our guests. I just wanted to mention uh, that I just got his CRKT Overland through the uh, Apex Passaround group. And I am in love with this little knife. I'm just going to say it right here. I love the design. It, uh, that's why I've got myself on the list to check this out in the first place. Uh, but having it in hand, this is an amazing EDC. It's very slender. I didn't. I wasn't expecting that. 
It's very slender. It's got uh, a really great action on nylon washers. It pops out really easily, but also something that you don't get frequently with a frame lock knife is you can slow roll this out without any accommodation for the lock bar. You don't have to change your grip or, or put your thumb in a weird position to get that to come out. I notice in a lot of my uh, frame lock knives, I can't really do that. And this, uh, this overland is impressive. So that's just a little plug for the TJ Schwartz design CRKT overland, which I have in my possession currently. And then it will be headed out the door soon after I make my video of it. But it's a very impressive knife. And I think it would be extra cool if it were extra large. <laughs> this thing has a three and a quarter inch blade, uh, which by the way is angled off the handle in such a way that you can cut things uh, without your knuckles <laughs> dragging, without your knuckles getting in the way. So very nice design, but how cool would this be in a four inch blade? And CRKT, they don't, they don't shudder at the thought of a four inch blade, you know? So I think they could do this and they could do this well. Excuse me while I pause for a sip of coffee. Best ad on the block, what can I say? A little bit of self-plugging there. Uh, anyway, so that's that. Uh, check out the CRKT Overland, and uh, I'm gonna put a video of this up probably in about two weeks. And uh, well, so far, it'll get a glowing review. So there you have it. Uh, next up, we're gonna talk about a couple of uh, knife drops in Knife Life News. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Oh, a lot of knives in that last little uh, little throw to this segment. A lot, of, a, lot of the, a lot of the utterance of the word knife, which I like. Anyway, up now from Benchmade, just released and coming. Well, I should say coming from Benchmade at this point is the 945-1. What is the 941, the 945-1, you ask? It is the uh, much requested Mini 940. The 940, the Benchmade 940, a really great and iconic EDC blade that never gets much love on this uh, on this channel, on this podcast, uh, except from our guests and from everyone else. I, I just have never been so thrilled with the 940, and I can hear, I can tell, a lot of people are talking to their uh, talking to their devices right now cursing me yeah you don't know what you're talking about you're shallow anyway you just go by aesthetics but i gotta say um never been a big fan of the 940 and they keep coming out with iteration after iteration which makes sense because most people most normal people are fans of this knife and why not give the people what they want i gotta say uh with that uh, kind of disparaging setup this new 945-1 looks awesome uh it is it, it solves the problem that I think the 940 has, which the, nine, the 940 to me is just slightly too small. The 945 is a slightly under three inch blade. Everything else is the same. I mean, if you look at that G10 handle, uh, actually, uh, could we go large on that, on that picture? Thank you, sir. If you look at that G10 handle, it's, it's a blue G10 scale, and then you have black G10 scale, and the black G10 scale, uh, which is on the top is sculpted just like the original aluminum version with the with the faux bolster and the and the deep grooves on the on the pectoral and dorsal uh, side of the handle and um, this this is to me what the 940 always should have been uh, you know smaller or larger but the nine uh, this so I think this 945 kind of nails it um, will I be getting this I don't know it'd be interesting to to get my hands on. Uh, it's an S30V, uh, which is very cor uh, corrosion resistant, but they've covered it with uh, DLC coating. And it's uh, black, black all over with the blue liners and the blue uh, standoffs, handsome knife. And uh, to me, and I know this is what they were aiming for, they were aiming to satisfy me and my design eye. Uh, they have finally made the perfect 940 because it's just the right size. Uh, anyway, that being said, please, comment and let me know what you think about what I think about that. Uh, I'll be interested uh, to find out. Just be, well, just be kind. Uh, next up, the Giant Mouse. Giant Mouse, it's a uh, production um, uh, shingle uh, starring Jen Zanzo and, uh, um, 
Oh, I always do this. I always do this. I'm sorry. Jen Zanzo and Jesper Voxnes, the two preeminent Danish knife designers. Uh, they have, they both design with a very, very recognizable uh, design style and uh, use many of the same cues. Like it's like they speak the same language. And in fact, they do. And they work very well together. And Giant Mouse has put out about eight knives so far, I think, in its four-year history. I probably have both those numbers wrong because I'm terrible at math, but it's something approximating that. And uh, one of their biggest hits, it was their second knife out, uh, was the Nimbus. Uh, beautiful, broad-shaped, uh, broad sort of drop point blade, a very nice ergonomic handle. Um, oftentimes I was seeing it in my card. I'm not sure if it was in, uh, featured anything else, maybe uh, carbon fiber. But now they're coming out with the Nimbus V2, that's version two, and they've made a couple of little changes. And one of the changes really warms uh, the cockles of my heart. Uh, they went from bearings in this non-flipper, uh, you know, thumb actuated, thumb hole actuated knife, which is cool. I mean, believe me, I like, you don't, you don't have to have a flipper to have bearings. But uh, they replaced them with washers, bronze washers. And to me, that's the way to go because it's just more robust. And uh, this is kind of a robust uh, design. And as you know, and as, uh, as Benjamin uh, Schwartz mentions here in this uh, Knife News article, bronze washers start smooth and get smoother and smoother. And uh, you're, you're sort of negating the uh, possibility of dirt and grit getting caught between the little bearings and, and messing things up. And this is kind of meant to be sort of an outdoorsy or, or uh, straight across the board sort of knife. Uh, EDC to outdoor style knife. So it makes sense uh, to move to bronze washers. Uh, they've uh, changed the weight a little bit, lightened it up to 3.8 inches and uh, deep carry pocket clip, uh, one of those wire pocket clips. And uh, it's cool. I think it's great that they've kind of rehashed it. I thought the first Nimbus was uh, was a very handsome looking knife. This is also looks pretty, uh, pretty nice. So I think it's a good uh, uh, good thing to do. Uh, Anzo and Voxnez are very, very popular, uh, not only in their production stuff through CRKT, Giant Mouse, and other places, but uh, Kershaw, et cetera, but also their, their uh, custom offerings are very, very uh, sought after and, well, hard to get. So uh, nice to see them do another version of the Nimbus. Let's see, next up. Mm. This is cool. This is a, an interesting idea coming from Real Steel. Uh, they have something coming out uh, with their company called the Sample Division. And they, they're they basically <laughs> making money off of the knives that they would be kind of putting in the vault or tossing away or just kind of putting aside. Uh, a lot of prototype knives come out of the production process. They're constantly tweaking and, um, you know, trying out new things and, and, uh, you know, there are factory seconds, this and that. And so uh, actually, I don't think any of these are factory seconds, but the sample division is an opportunity for you to buy from Real Steel some of their um, prototypes. Just a really cool idea, I think. Um, uh, the first one that's going to be available is uh, the um, uh, the Rockets, which is uh, just a really, uh, we've talked about that knife on this show a bunch of times. Very, very good looking knife and uh, they're gonna make it available in a number of different uh, handle materials. But uh, I don't. if you're a Real Steel fan, this seems like kind of an interesting thing to look into, the sample division, where you can, you know, they're even gonna have uh, Ostop Hell's new kitchen knife uh, samples through there. So check it out, check it out, the sample division, Real Steel. Um, I think that takes us to the end of Knife Life News. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so state of the collection. It's usually my favorite part of the show because I get to show off. And, you know, it's not showing off. It, it's in the guise of public information, so I'm not showing off. But uh, I'm just telling you some of the fantastic knives that have come into my collection or that are uh, uh, coming across my desk one of the great things about doing this podcast and the, and uh, the, the videos on YouTube and meeting uh, all of you interesting people out there who actually listen to this um, is uh, people offer me knives to check out. No, you know, not to give. A lot of people have been giving me knives, which is 
really great. <laughs> uh, but give me knives to check out. I'm, uh, a couple of videos are coming up this week, uh, which are custom knife uh, knife maker showcases. These are knives from knife makers that I've never heard of and probably wouldn't have heard of unless I was looking into it, who are making fantastic knives. Um, two viewers sent me a couple of knives uh, recently, so I'll, I'll be putting those up. Uh, but recently, a good friend of Thursday Night Knives in the channel, BJ Hill from Hilltop Gear, Knives and Gear, I want to show him off, sent, uh, sent me and Jim some very nice gifts. And uh, I'm very, very grateful. And uh, I want to show, show these off real quick. So uh, BJ knows from, from checking into the show and from uh, coming on Thursday Night Knives that I've been in a great big uh, slip joint phase. So he sent me this saying, I hope this scratches your slip joint itch. And though it doesn't completely scratch my slip joint itch, BJ, I love this thing. Thank you so much. This is a Rough Rider Copper Coil Edition, as you can see, Copper Coil, Copper, copper Coil Edition uh, Trapper, traditional trapper, which means it's got the, the clip point blade, kind of a muskrat clip point blade, and the spay blade. And these have the uh, double pulls, the long pulls, and then the match uh, match striker nail nicks, and uh, great action, nice and heavy copper copper and bone handle, just beautiful. Thank you, BJ. It is so greatly appreciated. It will never leave the collection, and it will nestle in gently uh, with all of my other trappers. I do appreciate that, sir. Secondly, he sent this to me and said I could sell it, and. I'm not gonna, because why should I sell it and make money off of this knife BJ gave me when I could keep it and have it? This is a really cool knife. This is the, the Degnan designed Roach uh, by Kaiser. Now this is the Vanguard version, which means it's, what kind of steel is this actually? Uh, oh, this is a N690. So a, kind of a less premium steel. And you have G10 and steel liners and a liner lock. And great action. They make a premium version of this in a sculpted, uh, you know, contoured titanium frame lock. Uh, and this is the Vanguard version. And I really like this knife. It's, it's really cool. And you've got that beautiful blue backspacer. Now, this when this came out, I thought immediately, this looks like a barong. This looks kind of like that, that blade in there. I, I should pull it out, but I thought I want a pocket barong, and then I never got around to it. And then he sent this and said, sell it or give it away. And um, I might give it away, but for a while, it's going to be a part of my collection. So BJ, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Third gift goes to Jim. And uh, also being a fan of the show, he knows that Jim collects ice picks, which I think is incredibly gangster. And I, I love it. And um, so BJ sent this. It's a titanium spike. He bought it a few years ago uh, to practice his anodizing. Now, if you know BJ Hill, he does beautiful, uh, all sorts of beautiful knife modding work and uh, anodizing and knife re-sculpting, etc. And uh, so he sent this to Jim to be his EDC ice pick. And I love it. I think it's really, really cool. So Jim, this will get in the mail to you post haste. Uh, uh, I'll have this in the mail to you tomorrow. And uh, yeah, you got a, you got a tactical ice pick. Uh, I mean, an EDC ice pick coming your way. So BJ, thank you. Thank you again. It's much appreciated. So uh, we have a couple other selections to show. I got a couple of GECs the past couple of days. And that's only because uh, they were things I was looking for and I found them at a great deal on uh, both on Blade Forums. The first is the number 62 Congress. And uh, I like Congress knives and I don't. Now Congress is not a political term when it comes to knives. Congress means they come together. But usually Congress knives are at least two springs deep and have four blades and sometimes they go up to six blades. And usually they, they'll repeat, you'll get like two uh, worn cliff blades and, and then two pen blades of differing sizes, something like that. Uh, but I, I'm fascinated by the single spring double-ended knives like this. And uh, I just always thought this was a, was a great knife. Now, now this handle material is flaring in the light. I'm gonna see if I can somehow 
Um, the handle material here is part of what I really love about this knife. It's a, uh, it's an acrylic. It's a, what do you call it? A, a synthetic material, but it's called unicorn ivory. And I just love that unicorn ivory. And uh, I've uh, mentioned to my youngest daughter that I have a knife in unicorn ivory horn. And she thought that was very cool. And then I, I had to, and then she asked me, are unicorns real? And, you know, I had to tell her the truth. And I said, no, it's just plastic kids always tearing away the veil uh anyway uh so i got that love this little knife very great uh very thin and very handy this is definitely a gentleman a gentlemanly knife this is like a wedding knife something you might carry to a wedding but as you know recently uh i got myself and my brother well i got it for my brother and then i tacked another one on because the the uh, seller had two of them but this beautiful number 82 the oiled oil field jack that has uh the spectacular clip point blade and a, and a really, really incredibly useful um, uh, sheep's foot blade. I got one for me. I got one for Vic. And uh, I, this has quickly become my very favorite pattern. I love this big jackknife. It's like the perfect size. Now it's a little bulky. It's a little much to carry. I got I have to admit, but I, I really like the pattern. And you know, I really like the jigged bones, especially the ones that have autumnal colors to them. And I was lurking around on blade forums and someone had this at a, a price just about half of what someone on eBay was selling it for. Cause I was haunting eBay too, kind of looking at this knife. I went on blade forums, someone had this for half the price. So it was a moral imperative. I had to jump on it. It's in the uh, Northfield unexcelled trim. Same, uh, same beautiful uh, clip point blade with the long pull and the machine, machine ground swedge, they call that. I think it's all machine ground, but, uh, and then this beautiful sheep's foot. This is the one I'm going to use. This is the one I'm going to carry. I think I will uh, leave this unmolested because uh, that tortoise shell, it, get, it can get kind of scratched and oh, I want to leave it sort of pristine. Uh, as a way of remembering the sort of joint birthday present, because my brother and I have birthdays a week away from each other. I was just late this year. So uh, yeah, there it is. And now a cool little, uh, little thing I noticed last night. If you remember on this show a year and a half ago, I got the 14, the little uh, GEC 14. This is like a big version of it. <laughs> yeah. So this is going to someday grow up to be an 86. So there you go. Those are my new uh, Great Eastern Cutlery knives, and uh, I'm, I'm very thrilled with them. I, I, I've, I've recently gotten this feeling like, oh, my God, something's going to happen. And uh, I don't know. I just want to snap up as many GECs at reasonable prices that I can't. There are a lot out there for sale for very unreasonable prices. But uh, when I find them for good, good prices, I'm going to keep them because, man, they make them at such small numbers. And if you like it, you need to grab it when you see it because they're fleeting. Anyway, I, you know me. Right now, I'm really into the into the GECs and the slip joints, and we'll see what happens. Speaking of which, there was a family Amazon order, and oh, oops, this slipped on it. The Kershaw Culpepper. Uh, this is also a slip joint knife. It's a big. It's a. It's a. What is that? It is a one two. <laughs> three it's a three inch blade and uh it's like seven cr something 13 mov and and it's a very very sharp it's got no half stop it's got great action great pull uh g10 handles everything is sculpted amazingly like transitions of materials and pins undetectable uh so 25 dollar slip joint if you have 25 bucks to spend and you're interested in getting into slip joints but you this, these, this is great. Now I want to check out, um, Kershaw came out when they came out with this, which is kind of like a Barlow, uh, kind of, they also came out with a Stockman, which is the three bladed version, uh, with a spay blade, a, uh, sheep's foot and a clip point. And then they came out with the trapper with the spay and the, and the clip. So three of the most kind of, uh, iconic, um, traditional patterns they came out with. If, this particular Culpepper is any indication, they are fantastic. So I want to check out the others. and uh, But I can't do it right now because we are nearing the end of the month. 
And uh, that's that's how I'm going to get into this next subject, uh, which I, I teased at the beginning. I talked about uh, these moratoriums I put on myself. I got to stop. I'm going to, okay, I'm not going to, no more sugar, no more alcohol. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And I put these strict, strict uh, moratoriums on myself when I feel like I've indulged, overindulged. And lately, one could say, one could argue uh, that I've been in, overindulging in the purchase of these things. And uh, it's not that I've been spending excessive money. Uh, because most of these things I've been getting lately have been uh, Rough Riders. You know, I've been going nuts on the Rough Riders. It's like, uh, so I think what I'm going to be doing is something I'm going to call very catchily No New Knife November. I think that's going to happen this this year. I think, I think I'm going to take the month of November to take stock and, uh, and, appreciate what I have. And of course, you know, you could, you could extrapolate this outward and say, I should be doing this with the rest of my life. And, and I, I think I'm, <laughs> I think maybe, uh, this will be a good starting point to do so. Um, and I'm not suggesting anyone else do this. I'm not trying to, uh, uh um, start any sort of trend or hashtag. Uh, and I'm definitely not trying to lessen anyone's sales. Uh, for sure. Like I'm now I'm trying to get as much in before November. Uh, but uh, I feel it's important to me just to uh, maybe get off the acquisition kick and that's this feel of, oh my God, if I don't get that very reasonably priced uh, secondary market GEC, it's going to be gone forever. And then something's going to happen and I'm going to wish I had that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. What it is, is a distraction from real problems. So um, so maybe the month of November, I'm going to focus on real problems and use these as commiseration to those problems. You know, while I'm working out those problems, I can have this in hand. I can flip it open. I can close it. And I can say that I'm glad I have this here to comfort me while I'm working out my real problems and not spending uh, excessive amounts of money that could be going to something else. You know, um, like I said, a lot of these things come to me through, through, um, viewers, but others are, you know, just me spending money. So, uh, no new knife November. And I think I'm going to recalibrate the collection a little bit. I know I'm saying that all the time, but I've been threatening a knife sale video recently for Patreon, uh, viewers. And, uh, and I think heading into November is going to really inspire me to trim the fat. You know, I can trim plenty of fat and have plenty of meat left over. Um, <laughs> in my knife collection, in the rest of my life. Uh, so, um, so see if I can burn off some of that dead wood. Anyway, I would like to thank you all for tuning into the Knife Junkie podcast, uh, the Wednesday supplemental edition. This is sort of the time for, for me to talk at length about these, these things that I think about. Um, you know, um, maybe this is also a way of feeling like it's less mindless acquisition. You know, I read somewhere that uh, the first part of your life is about mad, you know, not mad, but is, a, is an acquisitive time of life. You're acquiring things, a spouse, an education, a, a, a things you like, a good job, you know, and a, a promotion, more knives or cars or guitars or crystal penguins or whatever you collect. And then you reach a, a crest where you start to realize the things that are, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe things you want to focus on in the second part of your life. Um, maybe not so much acquisition, but but refining and appreciating and using and uh, and utilizing, not in the way that people like to use utilize, like a, a multi-syllabic way of saying use. I mean, utilize, make utility of these things. So uh, that, well, that's my little philosophical sign off. Um, I'm going to try no new knife November. No, I'm not going to try it. I'm going to do because there is no try only do a good friend of ours told us that once in 1986 or so. Anyway, people, thank you so much for checking out the Knife Junkie podcast. I really appreciate it. And uh, well, I'm going to sign off the way I sign off Thursday Night Knives and say, please don't take dull for an answer.
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.